Welcome back. In this video, we're going to go through advanced tips, tricks, and shortcuts so you can get the most out of your SketchWow software. As you'll soon realize, these tips and shortcuts are extremely helpful, especially when working with more complex or detailed sketches. We're going to go through templates, how to modify, edit, and customize them, and really make them more unique to you. We'll also talk about a lot of quick tips and little tricks I know you're going to love that will really make using SketchWow even more fun and easy. So let's get started. Now I have the pro version of SketchWow open here and as you'll see you have over a hundred different templates available to you. So you don't have to start from scratch, you don't have to look at a blank screen. If you don't want to, you can utilize one of the gorgeous pre-made templates like you see here. So I'm going to click on one template here, open it up. Now the one thing I want to do is of course customize this template to your needs. Modify the text, move things around, change some colors, and really personalize it, right? And how you do that is really simply you can go and click on the select menu item over here or press the S key on your keyboard as a shortcut. And then when you click on any element, you can double click on it as I showed you in the last video and change the text as you see here. Now, uh oh, the text is actually, it's wider than the actual border of the bubble. What do we do? How do I change this? Well, very easily, you wanna go and right click your mouse and a lot of these templates, especially the more complex templates, are using something called grouped elements. Now, I can click on ungroup and then when I click on this now, you see how the, now I can take the text, move it outside and I can shrink that down and put it right back in there so it fits in with everything. And then after that's done very easily, you can do a couple things. You can click your shift key and click on the actual elements themselves, right click, group it again. Now we're back in business, right? The second option is to use the select tool. I'm gonna to press the S key on my keyboard and I'm gonna go and highlight this block of elements and text here. I'm gonna go and right click, group it again and same effect, right? So that gives you the, an idea how to really go and start to modify all the elements within a template, especially if it's a more complex template. So as you can see here, you can modify these easily with you know, custom text, custom colors, swap out images and then group it together so it all fits together nicely as you see here. And that's really all it is in terms of modifying templates. I'm going to pause the video here and we're going to switch over to a, another uh, graphic that I created and we'll go through some more time saving shortcuts and tricks and tips I know you're going to love in the next part of this video. Let's do that now. All right, as you can see here, I have opened up the actual thumbnail that I used for this video. I thought, what better example than to show you how we create YouTube thumbnails utilizing SketchWow. Um, and of course, this is fitting since this is the exact thumbnail I used for this video. All right, first thing you might notice is that this seems a little bit chopped off at the bottom here. So that's no problem. We can go and just click on the, the zoom out button here and just to make that a little bit smaller, right? So we can fit it all within the screen here. Now we're going to go through a few things uh, in this video. I want to show you a little bit about how to work with more complex or more detailed images because you'll find that there's a lot of layers we're using here. There's a lot of groups we're using as I showed you um, earlier. Uh, so I want to kind of go through all that just so you understand exactly how to get the best use out of your SketchWell software and to really learn these more advanced time saving shortcuts and tips, right? So let's do that now. So a few things are going on here. You'll notice that first of of all, uh, I've incorporated an image into this actual thumbnail. Uh, now you can create all kinds of different visuals utilizing SketchWow as you know. Um, and one of the things we can do is add in any type of image or icon outside of SketchWow. And to do that, we simply just drag and drop any image right onto the canvas here, okay? Now you might be looking and saying, well, I want to click on this this girl and move her around. I can't do that. Well, so a few things you want to do here is you can work using layers to make your job a lot easier. Okay. So what I could do is a few things. I can just move this out of the way. I can click on the image here and I can just go a right click input, bring to front and then bingo. See what happens? It brings that layer right to the top. Okay. If you don't want to do that, you can go again, right click and we can move that to the back or you can also go up here to the undo key, or you can use your keyboard shortcuts, depending if you're Mac or if you are Windows, keyboard shortcuts work as well. So click on the undo key and you see now that image of that girl has moved back, back into the, uh, the background. 
And while we're still on the topic of layers, I want to just dive in a little bit more because this really is important stuff, especially as I mentioned before, when you're dealing with more complicated templates or diagrams like you see here in front of you. So there is another element related to moving those layers forward and backward that I want to talk to you about. For example, let's say that I wanted to add a random shape to this diagram. I know it looks horrible, but bear with me. Um, what you can do is you could, we showed you before how to just go and put, bring to back. Well, maybe you don't want that shape to be right in the back. Maybe you want it to be a little bit, you know, behind those uh, images and icons you see here. So what you can do is you can use the commands bring backward or bring forward. And what it does is it it moves it back one sort of micro layer. Rather than going all the way to the back behind all the images, as you'll see here, it'll slowly bring it back little by little. Or you can use the options up here, bring backward in the corner, and when I click on that, watch what happens. You see, it's slowly layer by layer moving that square further back in the actual image you see here. There's the thunderbolt, there's the unicorn, next is coming another shape here. They're all falling into line as I keep clicking the bring backward option. Can you see that? So now this is maybe looking something more like you envisioned. Um, you can really control the layers by utilizing, as I said before, the you know uh, bring backward or bring forward. And the same applies in the reverse. If you wanted to bring another element forward, you could do the exact same thing utilizing the controls here. So I want to go through that because you, you, you don't always want to use a bring backward to um, bring that element right to the very bottom of the layer deck, if you will. You want to have more control. So you want to kind of play with layers a little bit that way, utilizing the bring to front, bring to back, uh, or bring forward and bring backward to really give you the option to control uh, the elements on the actual canvas. A couple other time saving tips. You might not want the unicorn facing to the left really easily. Click on the right. You can go flip horizontal and now the unicorn is facing to the right. So any image you have within Sketch Wow, you can flip that horizontally or you can flip it vertically. And it gives you a lot more options in terms of how you utilize those images on the canvas, okay? Um, you'll notice that with a lot of the, the text I have here, I do some cool things with shadows. And that's simply just a matter of taking the actual font and making a copy of it and changing the color of the font. Once again, uh, if you want to make sure that's nice and clean to group those together, you can click on your shift key and we can group those together just to make sure that we are keeping things, you know, just very tight and clean on the canvas. Can you see that? Uh, once you start using groups, honestly, they'll be your best friend. Another best friend is also using the arrow keys on your keyboard because sometimes when you're moving things in position, you may need a little more sensitivity. So if I want to move this to the right, now watch your screen. I can just use the arrow keys and just slowly move this to the right. Very small with micro movements just to give me a lot more control. So use those arrow keys on your keyboard that really just save you uh, a lot of time as well. Now, for example, with something like this here, it gets a little bit tricky because we've got all these different elements here happening um, on this particular set of elements. So once again, you want to use your shift key. Just click on every element inside the box here and right click group and once again you see how that works it just makes it so much easier to go and really organize the, all the elements on your canvas to get the best use out of a sketch wow and of course in the upper right hand corner here we have undo redo bring to back bring forward bring forward and bring to front and of course we have copy and we also have paste there. You can any of those options, you can get most of them here by right clicking as well, whatever works best for you. Or in many cases, you can use your keyboard shortcuts, depending if you're Mac or PC, for all the common functions like cut, copy, duplicate, delete, and select all. And speaking about select all, I really want to dive in a bit here and show you what you can do utilizing the select all command within Sketch Wow. So let me go and open up a new template here just to show you exactly what we're talking about here. So, all right, this is a good one here, okay? Let me shrink it down a little bit so we can see it. All right, so a lot of different things going on here. As we talked about earlier, a lot of different elements. We've got text in here, um, and 
there are some grouped elements as well. Let's suppose you wanted to just make this entire uh, sketch smaller and resize it, rescale it. Use the of the select all command by right clicking or use your keyboard shortcuts, right? And you can easily just take that whole drawing and shrink it down. You see how cool that is? You know, I can even go copy and paste, make a whole other duplicate copy of it here, okay? So a lot of possibilities utilizing the old handy dandy select all function, okay? Uh, something else you want to do is you can also go select all once again. And what if you're making slides and you want to have duplicates of slide number one? Well, again, I'm going to go and either use my keyboard shortcut or use the copy command here. I'm going to go to the bottom, click on the plus tab at the bottom here, okay, and create a brand new slide. Then I'm going to go and paste it and voila, we've got an exact duplicate of that first slide. We can go a step further and actually change the order of the slides. Let's say we go and do something crazy and put some crazy pencil lines in here, whatever, just for demonstration purposes. We can then go and drag and drop that as our first slide. So now this becomes page one and this becomes page two. How cool is that, right? Another step further, since we're on the pro tip <laughs> bandwagon here, you can just double click on the actual bottom here and change the slide name from page one to slide one maybe from page two to slide two. So it really gives you a lot of possibilities on how to customize your slides and how to duplicate them and to really save a lot of time. Again, utilizing that handy dandy select all feature. And we're not done yet. Something else I wanna talk about is also the handy dandy shift key, which we have mentioned in the previous video. And I wanna kinda of go to the next level and show you all you can do with the shift key. So let's go and do a very simple diagram here with a couple of shapes, all right? And you want to put a connector line in between them. Let me go into the properties here and make sure we're actually using a straight line as opposed to a curved line. I'm going to click on the straight line. And now when I go back here, you'll notice here that the little red dot appears in select mode, or I could go and click on the line icon here. But watch what happens now. If I hold my shift key and drag the line, nothing too fancy but look whoa now it's completely straight right it, you can move it around you can't make this a curved line so when i connect it here now we've got a perfectly straight line that we can use for any time we're drawing connector lines utilizing sketch wow something else to do is also using the pencil or the marker click my shift key again and now my shaky awful hand drawing you see here becomes nice uniform shapes okay Let's try a triangle and see if I can make this look good. Voila, same with a circle, okay? Perfectly uniform shapes, how cool is that? Let's go the next step further. We're on the pro tip bandwagon now, all right? So here we go. Um, something else I can do, if I take my pencil and I draw a circle, you'll notice that it actually will fill in the actual perfect circle that I drew if you want it to. If you don't want it to, no problem. Go here and just click on no fill and voila, away you go. And this applies to marker and pencil as well. So I've given you just a lot of pro tips here to really make your life easier, to get so much value out of Sketch Wow and to do a lot more with it. And I hope you're excited about the possibilities I've shown you here. So I really want you to explore all these elements and all these effects within Sketch Wow and also utilizing the hand drawn effect as well, which we covered in the last video. So I hope this gives you some more ideas in terms of really how to navigate the canvas, how to work with you know more complicated shapes where you've got different layers and groupings and so forth and to really explore your creativity and really utilize all the functions available to you within the Sketchwire software. I hope this gets you more excited and pumped up about diving in and creating your own sketches using Sketchwire or utilizing the dozens and dozens of templates available to you as a valued Sketchwire customer. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again real soon.